Thank you all for joining us today for ACLCA's webinar, Measuring Sustainability in the Built Environment, Research and Tools to Advance a Sustainable Infrastructure. My name is Debbie Steckel, and I am the Executive Director of the American Center for Lifecycle Assessment. ACLCA is a nonprofit membership organization that brings together diverse organizations with a stake in the implementation and application of LCA. ACLCA hosts webinars, has a monthly member newsletter, certification programs, and active industry, education, policy, product category rule committees, and also produces the LCA annual conference, the largest LCA meeting in North America. This will be held this year, October 2nd through 5th in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. A call for abstracts as well as re registration is now open. You can find out more at lcaxvii.org. ACLCA will be hosting three additional webinars this month, and we hope you will be able to join us for those as well. Before I introduce today's speaker, some quick housekeeping items. All attendees are in listen-only mode. We will have time for Q&A at the end of the webinar, but you do not need to wait to ask your questions. You can type your questions into the GoToWebinar panel under questions anytime during the presentation. The webinar is being recorded and will be available on ACLCA's YouTube page on Monday, April 10th. All attendees will receive an email with a link to the YouTube page and the webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar or after, um, during the webinar, you can email me or also enter that into the question box. And afterwards, you can send me an email at dsteckel at aclca.org. It's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Josh Neifel. Josh joined the staff at NIST's Office of Applied Economics from the University of Florida in 2008. His research at NIST focuses on life cycle costing and life cycle environmental assessment of buildings. Josh received his bachelor's degree in mathematics and economics in 2003, his master's degree in economics in 2005, and his doctorate in economics in 2008. His fields of specialization in graduate school were industrial organization, public economics, and econometrics. He taught four semesters of environmental economics, and his dissertation is comprised of three essays on renewable energy policies and emissions trading programs. Now it is my pleasure to turn this over to Josh. All right. Uh, thank you, Debbie. Um, <clears throat> so it's a pleasure to uh, give this presentation today. Uh, hopefully you, you, you'll find it interesting as, as looking at um, sustainable building design uh, with, and I'll have a lot of focus related to life cycle assessment. Um, so this will give you an introduction to uh, the work that I'm doing here at NIST and uh, also give a highlight of, of a couple of software tools uh, of which a couple of the seminars later this month I'm giving um, as of, so it's next Tuesday and Thursday. <clears throat> um, and uh, being part of the Applied Economics Office here in the Engineering Lab at NIST, um, I, I do a range of, a range of uh, work, uh, anywhere from uh, sustainable building design to smart grid to uh, building life cycle costing. Um, but today I'm actually going to focus on my metrics and tools for sustainable buildings project. Uh, and, and really the key objectives here is, is to develop science-based metrics uh, for measuring sustainability performance in buildings. Uh, so we, we, we look at the economic components because if it's not economically viable, it's not sustainable. Uh, we use uh, life cycle costing methodology. And, uh, and then for the environmental side, we use life cycle impact assessment. Uh, and we also look at some, some other metrics as well, which we're starting to incorporate into what we're doing. Uh, looking at indoor environmental quality, uh, thermal comfort, and uh, indoor air quality are, are the two that we're, we're looking at uh, at this point in time. And <clears throat> with regards to measuring sustainability, we're, we're really trying to educate and assist stakeholders when it comes to, to making decisions. Uh, these stakeholders range quite a bit depending on, on the work that, that we're, we're doing, 
uh, either standards and codes uh, organizations, government agencies, industry, uh, academia, as well as the, the public at large. Um, <clears throat> and we do publish a lot, but what I'm going to focus on today uh, are actually three software tools that we have uh, have been or will be developing. And the first one, which uh, some of you may be aware of, uh, is uh, referred to as BEES, Building for Environmental and Economic Sustainability. And that's really focused on comparing sustainability performance of similar building products. Uh, and we actually have 250 uh, building products in the tool at this point. Um, the initial version of BEES came out, I believe, in 1997 as an executable. Uh, but our most recent release, uh, actually, we shifted over to a web interface that's free to use. Um, and <clears throat> so you can compare products such as insulation or flooring, uh, compare those types of products uh, across uh, both, both the economics and the environmental performance. Uh, and uh, it's really trying to target uh, designers and acquisitions related to uh, sustainable products. Uh, and here you can actually see the uh, kind of sustainability metrics, uh, the approach that we use um, for uh, the first component, the, 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 the cost side of things, that we account for both the first and the future costs uh, of, a, of a building product. <clears throat> and then we, we discount those into present value terms and then aggregate those together, which gives you the total life cycle costs uh, for that product. Uh, so that's relatively straightforward conceptually. What's well, a little bit more complicated, although with the backgrounds that, that we probably have on the phone today, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have some background in this. But what we do is we use life cycle assessment. So you take all the, the individual flows uh, associated with a product, uh, cradle to grave, uh, and aggregate those up into impact categories. Uh, so most of these you're probably familiar with. Uh, these are uh, the Tracy uh, categories plus um, a couple of others that we've incorporated in uh, for, for our bees metrics uh, and <clears throat> such as land and water use. And so a lot of analysis, uh, particularly with the way I, I, I do analysis, is really at this level where you, you look at the life cycle cost, you look at the life cycle impact assessment values for these different impact categories. Uh, but what we've also done in our bees software is actually um, developed a, a normalized weighted average approach that actually allows you to um, compare the uh, or to to come up with a, a a normalized value for each impact category, and then weight each of those based on the relative importance to you, and you can come up with a single environmental impact score. So then you come up with you know an economic impact score using the life cycle cost, and then the environmental impact score using uh, the weighted normalized average of the impact categories. And Bees Online, uh, it's publicly available for free. Uh, so this was the most recent release at this point was uh, in 2011. Um, and so you can see here uh, kind of the intro page as well as uh, just a, a one screenshot from the results. Uh, so um, there's also a tutorial and documentation associated with everything in the tool. Uh, so if you're interested, you can go to the link and, and use the tool. And <clears throat> Since we've uh, released this, we've, we've decided to actually do a, a, a new version um, to, to update the interface as well as the, the uh, approach that we've used to uh, create the results. And so we currently have a, a, a beta version of Bees Online 2.0. Um, and so we, we had some stakeholder discussions looking at, uh, you know, talking with some government agencies, with, with industry groups, uh, as well as some of the green certification organizations and LCA experts about um, you know, the current version of bees, uh, what they may be looking for for a, for a new version. Uh, and some of the things that, that came across from that is uh, you know, really looking at um, you know, being able to filter products and, and looking at product certifications. Um, and there's been quite a bit of interest related to, to acquisitions for, for sustainable acquisitions and maybe certain criteria that would have to be met for that. Um, and so we've decided to update the web interface. Uh, we've started with the flooring category, so it's the first category that will be included. Uh, so we've updated all of, all of those products. Um, the, the approach that we've decided to use is really focused on uh, looking at product category rules and, and basing our LCA based on those, since those are industry consensus uh, approaches to do those LCAs. 
And uh, we've incorporated filtering options, which uh, wasn't in the previous version. So you can narrow down your products by, by type or characteristic. Um, and we've also given some additional methodology options. So I mentioned before the, the basically using uh, the bees categories, which were, were Tracy in combination with a couple of additional impact categories that we included. Uh, we now actually allow for, for, for Trace, Tracy 2 and bees, but also um, for that particular product category, whatever the, the PCR uh, categories are for the impact categories, we have results for those. So if, uh, if the user wants to specifically look at those, they can, they can just look at those categories. Uh, something that, that um, government agencies have been sh had shown interest in is the social cost of carbon. And so we've actually incorporated that into our economic analysis. Um, and we've also removed the, the weighting option uh, at this point. Um, part of that is, is the, um, based on the standards, uh, basically saying that you're not allowed to use any weighting approaches. So we've excluded that at this point unless uh, user feedback determines that we should include that as an option in the future. And so and that's just a brief overview of these online. Um, we're actually going to do a demo of this on Tuesday uh, at noon. Um, so you can actually see what, what the current version of Ease Online looks like, and you'll actually be able to see a, a demo of, of this beta version where you can actually see the updated interface and, and the new options that are there. <clears throat> and so moving forward with, with the new version of, of Bees, uh, we're currently in the process of, of working on uh, incorporating some, some new product categories, uh, gypsum, siding, um, the, the coating category as well as insulation uh, and then for 2018 what we look what we plan on targeting is, is the con the categories with concrete uh, as, as well as there's some opportunities for some other categories based on um, in interest from industry uh, as well as um, feedback from users uh, and also we're, we're going to be accepting uh, company specific submissions uh, as those come in um, for uh, maintenance uh, on this tool, what we want to do is we want to keep up with the, the PCR cycles. So if a product category rule gets updated, we want to make sure we update our, our product categories uh, at the same time. So that way we can stay consistent with what, what industry is looking for. And uh, really, we really hope to get some user feedback. So if you're interested in being a beta tester, uh, this is something that we will have on a public server sometime soon. Uh, we don't want to uh, roll it out officially, but uh, we would would like to get some feedback with regards to uh, what users would find useful, um, maybe what changes they may recommend uh, before we release something publicly. And if you're <clears throat> familiar with bees, uh, we've had this bees please program uh, in place for quite some time, where there's actually a pre a, a questionnaire that's been developed that you can fill out if you want to uh, submit a product. <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, you can also uh, either submit industry averages or uh, you know a company specific product um, would would be op you could be included. Um, we're also open to incorporating new categories that maybe currently aren't aren't in the current bees online. So if there's there's interest from industry uh, that's that doesn't currently have anything in, in bees, uh, we're open for that as well. <clears throat> and uh, the, since we're looking at individual products in, in the bees software, <clears throat> we use a, a bottom-up process-based LCA approach. But this approach, since you have to look at the product, look at all the inputs, account for all the environmental flows associated with those inputs, and then aggregate all those, those inputs up, um, it can be very time consuming for an individual product and uh, it's actually you know, nearly impossible to do that for a whole building. Um, and so since we're expanding what we're doing from individual products to whole buildings with the next software I'm going to talk about, um, <clears throat> you know, we, we had to find an alternative approach to um, be able to create a whole building LCA. Um, so what we've done is, is uh, we've also looked at, at the option for a top-down LCA approach, which uses environmental input-output tables. And uh, so those are all based on the economic supply chain. And then there's environmental flows associated with, with 
each of those supply chains. Um, we actually worked with uh, Sang Wan Su uh, out at UC Santa Barbara uh, to develop um, not just con uh, flows by construction sector, but actually by building type within the construction sector. So we have a flow per dollar spent by building type. And so this is really an average emissions across the uh, across the industry for that building type. So I, I, I refer to it as a fuzzy number. So it's not uh, not as accurate as you'll get from a process based approach. But uh, um, in the case of looking at a whole building, it's impossible to uh, have a process based LCA for every single product in a building. And so here I've created a kind of a visual representation to explain um, the kind of the difference between the, the process based bottom up and a top down uh, IO approach. <clears throat> so the optimal picture, so to speak, of, of a building would give you a very clear image of uh, absolutely everything. Um, but the problem is with, with process based uh, approaches, uh, you really only get bits and pieces of the building. Maybe you get really detailed information on solar PV or windows. Uh, or the exterior wall design. And so you're missing the rest of the picture. Now with input output data, uh, as I mentioned, a fuzzy number, you, you, you get a picture of the entire house, but it's not very clear. So <clears throat> by combining these two, you can get really precise information on, on the things you're most important about and that are most important to you. Uh, so if you're looking at energy efficiency in a building, the things that actually impact that energy efficiency, but uh, you can, then you can supplement that using the input output data to uh, account for the other flows associated with the building that, that don't change. So not only does it give you the change in flows uh, by changing energy efficiency, you also get an overall magnitude of the overall flows. <coughs> and so our approach by using this hybrid LCA, we uh, assume a baseline building, some minimum level of efficiency, and we use the I.O. data uh, to make that calculation. <clears throat> and then what we do is then we use the, the process-based data for insulation, for windows, for the, the heating and cooling equipment, and then, we and then we add those on in terms of the changes that occur as a result of improving the energy efficiency from making that change in the building design. And so it, not only does it give you the change in emissions, it also, it also gives you the, the magnitude of that change relative to the building as a whole. So <clears throat> that's the, the hybrid LCA approach that we use. Uh, and now I'll talk about taking that, that B's framework of both the economics and the environmental performance and expanding that to whole building. And <clears throat> so the, the way that we do this is we, we start with an energy simulation design uh, so you have the building characteristics uh, of that building, and you combine that with cost data um, that, that you can estimate the, the cost of constructing a building, and then use the combination of the I.O. data and the, and the process-based LCA data to calculate the flows associated with, with constructing that building. And then you can take the, the, the results from the energy simulation model, <clears throat> combine that with the, with the cost data, uh, for energy for that particular location and calculate the operating energy costs and uh, taking the the uh, location specific energy related flows and, and calculate the flows associated with that energy consumption. And then also you have to take into account the entire life cycle of a building. So you have to look at the, the maintenance repair and replacement costs of, of items in the building as well as any residual value at the end of the study period that you're looking at. And then also you have to account for the environmental flows associated with all that maintenance, repair, and replacement. And so when you aggregate all the costs up in terms of the present value terms, you get your life cycle costing uh, value. <clears throat> and you can aggregate all your life cycle assessment data up to get uh, your total impact category uh, flows. And what we've added in uh, just recently is, is look, also looking at the, the performance in terms of the simulation, looking at how comfortable the building is, as well as the indoor air quality uh, within that building. So by combining all four of those metrics, you're actually able to get a, 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 a multiple sustainability performance metrics to, to compare buildings across. <clears throat> and so what we've done is this, this BIRDS tool uh, is really targeting 
um, kind of higher level decision making. So building officials, uh, code and standards developers, and policy maker policy makers um, to to show what the impact could be in terms of not just the energy performance, but the economic performance and the environmental performance of increasing the efficiency of uh, new building design. And so it's really looking at making the, the business case for, for um, requiring um, more strict uh, energy uh, building standards and codes. <clears throat> and we have three databases in the BIRD software. Uh, the, the first was, was uh, released in the ver first version of the tool. Uh, it was a commercial building database that looks at a range of prototype buildings across the entire country, uh, really based on ASHRAE 90.1, if you're familiar with the energy standards. <clears throat> Similarly, on the, on the residential side, uh, there's a range of prototypes across the same 228 cities, uh, and that's based on the IECC for residential buildings, because uh, that's what states tend to adopt for their uh, state energy codes. So I always kind of refer to this as, a, as a, an inch deep, but a mile wide. So you can look across the country, across these suite of energy efficiency improvements and see how the building changes in terms of energy economics and environmental performance. <clears throat> but that doesn't really allow you to look at a lot of the incremental analysis that could also be done. Uh, so a third database that we've developed, which is really looking at low energy residential database or low energy residential design uh, is actually based on this net zero energy residential test facility. And so you can see a picture here on the left uh, of the actual house. And, and then a, the, the image on the right is, is my energy model uh, replicating um, the performance of the, the net zero energy house. And <clears throat> what I've done is I've taken all the different potential requirements uh, from the different versions of the IECC code, uh, as well as the designs incorporated in the net zero energy house, and incremental designs in between those uh, and, and came, came up with 240,000 unique building component combinations. And so uh, you're actually able to select any of these and compare them to any of the other ones. It ends up being about 75 million records once you account for some of the other underlying assumptions that, that you can select. Uh, and so you can actually choose different discount rates. So you, what's your alternative investment rate? Um, you can choose diff uh, a couple of different financing options. So if you're purchasing a house um, in terms of um, the, the assumptions on, on, on how you would finance that with a, with a loan, as well as construction quality, because we wanted to account for the fact that interior finishes can add fifty to $100,000 to the cost of a house. Uh, so if you want luxury finishes, you need to account for those additional costs. So we and we just released a matter of a week or two ago um, the the version 3.1 of the tool and so what what this did actually is it added to this low energy residential database uh, so it basically doubled the size of the database in terms of terms of options that are there uh, we also incorporated the indoor environmental quality metrics that I mentioned earlier and we also added in um, a, a brick facade option so uh, if your exterior wall has a different design as opposed to siding versus versus brick. We wanted to allow for that option. And then <clears throat> one of the, the the biggest things that we incorporated in were some, some new graphical features. Uh, and, and so it allows you to visually see a, a lot of the results um, a lot more intuitively than, than previously uh, that you could. So, um, you know, we'll actually go through a demo of this tool uh, on next Thursday uh, as well. So uh, if you're interested in either bees or birds, um, please go ahead and, and come in on the, uh, <clears throat> the conference calls for, for next week. So what we've really done is we've, uh, you know, we, we have a tool for individual building products to help you compare individual products. We now developed a tool that allows you to compare whole building designs based on improving energy efficiency. Uh, but what this tool does is since it's higher level, everything's pre-processed, uh, you have these prototypes that don't necessarily represent a specific building. And <clears throat> so we're, we're looking at, at expanding that to um, allow a user to do uh, a custom building design. So well, before I get to that, I uh, also want to mention that 
uh, we are going to continue to expand the BIRDS tool. Uh, we, we've already updated the residential database uh, to incorporate the, uh, the 2015 IACC. Uh, we are, are currently updating the commercial buildings database uh, to fall in line with uh, the Department of Energy's reference buildings. Uh, and we'll <clears throat> incorporate in the newest editions of, of ASHRAE 90.1. And then uh, moving on from there, uh, we, we, we intend to keep up with the different editions of the standards and codes, uh, incorporate new metrics, uh, as well as some new options. Uh, one thing that we're incorporating into the low energy database uh, in the near future is, is gas, space, and water heating. Um, and there's some other options we're also considering, uh, different types of foundations and um, occupancy uh, schedules and so forth. Um, so we're definitely looking for user feedback on these uh, to try to determine what, what, how it's going to be used and um, what additional features people would like. So moving on to the custom design tool that we're looking at, at, at completing, we re really wanted to allow um, you know, designers, architects to take their own design and run the same types of sustainability calculations uh, that we're doing uh, in the, the BIRD software. And so what we did is we worked with uh, the National Renewable Energy Lab uh, to develop a, an open studio measure um, that uh, is essentially a plug-in to Open Studio. Um, and Open Studio is a uh, an application that that works with uh, the underlying Energy Plus software, and that's what runs the whole building energy models. Um, and so it's a tool that's already already in existence, can already do you know a lot of really powerful things. And so we just wanted to allow for us to plug into that and allow for the life cycle assessment calculations to be done at the same time as the energy modeling. Uh, and so we've worked with them to, to develop a measure that, that can do that. <clears throat> and so here's a, a, a screenshot of, of what Open Studio looks like uh, when you get to the point where um, you can incorporate a measure, which it's based on energy efficiency measure. So something that you would change the model in some way to improve energy efficiency. But it's more powerful than that because you can actually really do anything, any sort of manipulation of the model. And so what we've done is we created this measure that the user, if you can see on the right hand side there, just has, to, has a few inputs that they have to put in related to the building characteristics. And then most of the information actually gets pulled in uh, automatically from the model itself. And once you've uh, open this up and you, you run the model, what happens is um, <clears throat> the building characteristics and the energy results get pulled from that, get incorporated into an input file that then gets sent to a web server at which our calculation engine is waiting for. So as soon as that file hits, we grab the file, parse it, run the lifecycle assessment calculations, kick back the results to the web server, and then open Studio. Uh, pulls that information in automatically in, in the reports of the of the tool, you can actually see the um, the life cycle impact analysis that's available. And so uh, we think this is, is, a, is a pretty powerful option because somebody that's already using Open Studio can, uh, without really having any background in life cycle assessment, can get life cycle assessment results. All they have to do is populate a few inputs. So. Uh, this is something I'm, I'm most, uh, most excited about in terms of the, the three tools that we've developed. And, you know, at the moment, what we've developed is only for, for really low-rise residential. Uh, but what we'd like to do is to also uh, replicate this for commercial buildings and also take, allow this, this API that we've developed to be used by basically any CAD or BIM modeling software. Because uh, the way we've developed it, it doesn't really matter where the, the file's coming from, uh, as long as it's in the correct format. So we could easily create a kind of a development kit for the different um, CAD and BIM software developers, and then they could actually send us files directly and do something very similar within their software, whether it's, I know Revit is a very commonly used uh, software in the, in the industry. So, <clears throat> and the, the name at this point, uh, just to go along with the theme of bees and birds, is, is Bird's Nest. That's where we've, uh, at this point, thinking we're going we're gonna to name it when it gets to that point. But um, so uh, that's where we're looking to go in, in the future with that. And 
Uh, looks like we're in pretty good shape. We got um, 20 minutes or so for for questions. Um, so at this point, uh, here's my contact information. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, <clears throat> and you know, if you if you want to see demos of the tools, please uh, uh, join us next week uh, for those. And uh, you know, for uh, if you have any other questions, you know, go ahead and uh, send those to to Debbie now. Yeah, exactly. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to enter them into the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Um, we do have some questions in, but before I start reading through those, I'm going to turn it over to Mike Levy, um, who is an ACLCA board member as well as chair of the ACLCA policy committee, who's on with us and who was going to kick off the questions. Mike? Thanks, Debbie, and, and Josh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, and as Debbie said, uh, we uh, at ACLCA uh, uh, have a, a huge interest in what you're doing, and uh, I've worked with you over the years, too. So uh, from a policy committee standpoint, just to kind of kick things off, um, one of the things that you did mention, which I thought was pretty interesting, was uh, um, with especially with the 2.0 uh, materials online of the discussions uh, with some of the folks on green procurement. And uh, that's one of the items, uh, at least from an ACLCA perspective, that we obviously would like to uh, uh, see more LCA written into, from the old EPP standards to now very specific building construction. So I guess I'm just interested to see how that's going to actually evolve, and maybe you can kind of let us know uh, some of the discussions you've had with some of the agencies, whether it's just federal or state procurement. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so early uh, in the early stages of that, uh, I really wanted to get the, the tool uh, developed so there was something to see as opposed to just things conceptually. Um, so we've, you know, we've got a, a beta version. I'm, I'm uh, kind of in that outreach mode at this point to get feedback from, um, you know, any any stakeholder that's interested in as to how they might use the tool, uh, anything that that we could do to improve it, and um, you know, if there's any any way to best target uh, what the users really need. So we've, <clears throat> we've had some initial discussions with some of the agencies, but um, and nothing really really detailed with regards to trying to target a specific acquisitions program or something like that. Okay. Great. So I'm going to read out the first question that we have. How do you ensure no double counting happens with this hybrid approach? Can't some processes, quote, included in IO LCA be counted again with process-based LCA? Yeah, I see. So. Um, hi, this is Annie Landfield, Greg, with Four Elements. Um, and I'm, I'm here with Josh. Uh, there isn't double counting because Sangwan's group, who was doing the I.O. portion of the buildings, um, they made sure to take out the windows, the HVAC, the insulation, all of those categories that I was doing the process LCA on. So there isn't any double counting. Great. Our next question is, sorry I missed this. Are you looking for beta testers for the new version of bees? And if so, how to become a beta tester for version 2.0? Uh, yeah, so go ahead and send me an email um, is the shortest uh, answer to that. Uh, absolutely, we're looking for beta testers or <clears throat> even just people to use the, the even the existing tools and give us feedback. Uh, at any point, we're, we're welcome to that. Um, so we're as, it, within the next month or so we should have something on a public facing server that anyone should be able to access so the the one thing that we would ask is that we you don't forward the link to people other than the the, you know, the people that have specifically asked to be uh, beta testers so we know who's looking at it and um that way it doesn't you know go out when before there's you know if we find an issue or something isn't working correctly that we can address that before it gets publicly released Great. For the next question, um, birds, only for newly built or also renovation? In case of renovation, how did you allocate the environmental and economical costs over different life cycles? 
Yeah, and, and we have in the past discussed uh, doing retrofits. Uh, at, at this point, the way that, that BIRDS is designed, it's only for new construction. Um, it, and they're, they're, as what they brought up, there's obviously issues with exactly how to allocate some of those, those aspects in, in a retrofit design. Um, and um, from our perspective, it's really difficult to try to come up with a prototype design to represent uh, different kind of vintages of uh, existing buildings. And <clears throat> for that purpose, we really haven't um, delved into that because that prototype isn't really representative of, of much uh, because there's so many complications related to, uh, to an existing building which could have been partially renovated you know 20 years ago even though it was built 50 years ago and um, so what we think with regards to the the custom building design we think that's where the potential is for allowing for retrofit work so you can actually design your house within uh, within open studio and then run the LCA calculation uh, for what your current uh, design is, and then if you were to improve it with energy efficiency, then you then you could actually uh, run those. And so, once we get the new construction working within Open Studio, uh, we we may start to look at the retrofit side of things, because obviously retrofit's a um, a very important aspect related to trying to upgrade the building stock, because it's 99 percent of the building stock. Um, <clears throat> but at this point, just due to the complexities, you know, we wanted to start with new construction. And getting to the point where we're comfortable with that being um, completely accurate and uh, available before we started to delve into the retrofit side of things. And I might also add that with birds, they do have the whole range of the energy codes. So some of the older energy codes um, could be somewhat proxies for already existing buildings, um, whereby newer buildings have um, newer codes. Um, they're built with newer codes. So there is some, you know, you know, some assumptions you can make when you're looking at um, the different energy codes. Great. Our next question is, is BEES connected to a specific EPD program? So no, it's not. So um, the the approach at which we've, we've used is to, to be consistent with the, the product category rule for, for a product category, um, but it's, it's not a development of an actual EPD. Um, you know, we've, re we've reached out to, to industry um, to um, talk to those companies about how, you know, the underlying assumptions in their EPDs, if, you know, they um, have incorporated their products. Um, <clears throat> and so then we've used that as the same basis. So we're, we're trying to use the same underlying data uh, and information uh, to make our, our calculations. Great. Our next question is, how accurate are the LCA results provided by either bees or birds? How do you treat uncertainty in these tools? Um, I think we're going to get into some of that when we do um, the more detailed focus on those tools. So, I, uh, yeah, I... Yeah, in, in, in short, at this point, we haven't incorporated the uncertainty component into, um, into the analysis. Uh, obviously, some of the impact categories have more uncertainty than others, and so that's something that needs to be considered when interpreting those results. Um, everything that we do is, is, is well documented and um, so you can go in and look to see how, how things were calculated and um, you know then you know, in some cases you, you know, if, it, if there's a lot of uncertainty in one of those impact categories then you just need to, to be aware of that and, and, and take that into consideration when, when you're comparing the results. So it's, in the future we would like to incorporate uncertainty. Um, we just haven't gotten to that point yet where we can um, incorporate distributions and in all this analysis because um, in developing these databases it, it's complicated enough with a single point as opposed to a distribution that you're making these calculations across. Great and I'll just add um, for the bees webinar that will take place April 11th at noon and the birds will take place April 13th at noon 
And the follow-up email from this webinar will have links to make it easy to register for either or both of those webinars. Okay, our next question is, what database populates bees? Is it you, the US LCI database? It is a combination of US LCI database and EcoInvent for the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's built in SEMA Pro. Right. Great, and our next question is, do you treat biogenic carbon differently than fossil carbon in these tools? And if so, how do you assess its impacts? Certainly with the LCAs, uh, building the LCAs, we treat the biogenic carbon differently. Um, and I believe I'd have to go back to see what uh, what Tracy is doing for the global warming potential. I think that they are not subtracting out biogenic, they're not making a biogenic carbon negative. Um, I think it might be just just zero in the global warming potential. I'd, ha I'd have to go back and check. Okay, our next one is question from Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology. Which methods do you use to evaluate IAQ and comfort? Predicted mean value? Um, so the thermal comfort metric uh, is actually based on ASHRAE 55. Um, so the, when you run the energy model, one of, uh, one of the options you can actually have as an output is, is the number of hours under which uh, people are considered uncomfortable based on that standard. Um, <clears throat> obviously, that, that if you're familiar with the standard, it's basically a range of combinations of temperature and humidity that is assumed that 90% of people are considered consider it comfortable. Uh, that obviously varies from person to person. Uh, some people may be comfortable when it's much colder and some people like it a lot, a lot warmer. Um, there are some other options in terms of thermal comfort that we can use. Uh, one thing that we can simply use is, is whether or not the set point's being met. Um, so that's one that we'll probably include in the future as an option. Uh, so, if, you know, if you have a higher set point, because that's what you want, and, and then that would be the, the way that, that would get measured. Um, with regards to indoor air quality, um, <clears throat> this is another one where, it, with regards to uncertainty, uh, something definitely needs to be considered with regards to the analysis. Um, it, what we use is, is um, average parts per million CO2 uh, by hour. So if you have an, an, and the two cutoff values are 750 parts per million and 900 parts per million. And the way we came across those or uh, determined on, on to use those, I, I, we have an indoor air quality and ventilation group here at NIST. And I spoke actually with the, the, the division chief um, about this and there really isn't any clear uh, cutoffs that are determined to be unhealthy or, or concerning. Um, but we did find some literature that, that showed that, that those two values are, are kind of target values. Um, I believe actually, I'm trying to remember, I think it's a, a, a study in Europe that, for which we took that from. I have to go back and check to see what, what literature it was. But <clears throat> um, so we use those as a starting point for a proxy for indoor air quality because uh, the assumption is if CO2 levels are high, um, then you're not removing the other other pollutants in the air either. So if you can reduce the CO2 levels, that means you're reducing, you know, volatile organic compounds as well. And so if you can get those down to low levels, then the the air should be um, of greater quality. Uh, so uh, we have to be hesitant with regards to how we interpret the results from the tool, but it does show an emphasis on the need to um, consider both the thermal comfort and the indoor air quality, because in some cases in, in the results you actually see you get a trade-off between the two. Um, so, so those are the approaches, uh, just to recap with uh, after the great detail I went into. Thermal comfort is, is based on ASHRAE 55, uh, how many hours at which um, somebody's considered uncomfortable in either the first or second floor in the house. And then uh, for the indoor air quality, it's um, two cutoff values for uh, CO2 parts per million average across an hour. So how many hours at which 
the parts per million were above 750 and 900. Great. The next question is, how is the LCIA part of BIRDS different from the Athena Impact Estimator for Buildings? Uh, I don't know enough about, about it to um, answer that question. I don't know. Josh. Yeah, I'm not <clears throat> overly familiar with, with the details of the Athena tool, actually, which is something I should look into. Great. Um, how often do you update LCC database? Um, so the lifecycle cost database, um, <clears throat> anytime that we update uh, uh, one of the databases, we, we update the underlying uh, cost data as well. Uh, so um, it just it would depend on which database. Uh, when we go to update um, you know, all three of them, essentially, in the next year or so, <clears throat> we'll also update the underlying source data for the cost data. Great. So the next question is, is the background documentation and methods accessible for users? Um, I, I guess I'm not quite clear on the question, but I mean, it's uh, available. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's pretty clearly uh, uh, written for somebody to understand. I mean, if you want to get into the, the nitty gritty details, it's there as well. But uh, I think it, it's written for, for a user to understand. Plus, there's a tutorial uh, that's available, so you can actually get walked through and, and get some guidance on, on how to do, do that. Great. All right, so there are a couple more questions. Um, the next one is for bees, comparison at the product level. How do you then define the functional unit? What is the target group of bees? Um, so, I mean, the functional units uh, dependent on the the product type, um, and so you know, like for for flooring, it's it's per square foot. Um, so, I mean, it's the typical approach in the U.S. for um, comparing products per uh, you know purchasing products. You're looking at the cost per square foot. So that's just an example. It's the first product we've incorporated in, but uh, it'd be a, the common unit that would be used uh, in the U.S. And then, uh, I'm, I repeat the second question, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think that's that covers it. Let's see, okay, um, I guess we have time for one more question. Um, the bees, which version of EcoInvent is used? Did you modify the EcoInvent data to customize them to the US situation, since there's a lot of Swiss and European data? Uh, yeah, it was um, um, EcoInvent like 2.2 EI US or something. The EI US EcoInvent uh, customized to US. Okay, wonderful. Well, Josh and Annie, thank you so much for your time and this wonderful webinar and thank you for everyone for attending. As I mentioned, this webinar is being taped and we will post it on Monday on ACLCA's YouTube site. You will receive an email about that as well as the two upcoming webinars next week, one a demo on bees and one a demo on birds. Thanks so much and have a great rest of your day.